Hi guys, it's me, Daniel, and uh, here I am at Rapper Car in Bangkok in Rama Free. Um, here is Project Top Gun in, well, it's looking in a bit of a sorry state, but they always do when they're half finished. So, as you can see, the color, it looks kind of like Marrakesh Brown, but it's not Marrakesh Brown. I'll put the color uh, in the description because it's not Marrakesh Brown. It's got a lot more gold in it. Um, now, I've got the N-Tech kit uh, on the side here. Used to be the normal SE uh, from the original car. They never did N-Tech in Thailand, so that's been added on. Not fitted correctly quite yet. Um, we've had the chrome removed and it's been blackened. Nice gloss black trim, as you can see here. Looking pretty nice. Moving along to the back, ignore this, it's not finished yet. We have a M3 Evo spoiler. Um, there's actually an extra lip, but I haven't put it on yet. Um, that's gonna be gloss black. Moving along here, if you follow me, if you can come around the back. We've got, they're not brand new tail lights, they're refurbished. Um, you can see there's been a slight repair, but they're a lot better than, than what was on here before. The, the original ones were completely cracked. Um, these look much nicer and they've really freshened the car up. Um, yes, I know there's no rear bumper. Um, the rear bumper is over there getting wrapped, so it's not done yet. No badge, don't worry, I've got a badge. Follow me around this side. Looking a little bit better here. We have an M3 sill, lower sill. Interestingly, um, the, this is for a two door. However, the length is the same. So this is actually designed for a two door E30, but as you can see, it actually fits the four door. And apparently that is a fact. So if you have a four door E30, you can use a M3 two door E30 lower sill. So there you go, or side skirt, sorry. So yeah, there you go, there's a fact for you. Um, this is still not quite finished. I mean, if you come a little bit closer, you can kind of see where, I'll put my hand there so you can see, you can see where the wrap is, but this will be completely hidden because the trim hasn't been put on yet. So you won't see that. It will look like this, nice and pretty and gloss black. Mirrors aren't done. I'm gonna have these done in the same brown. Um, coming to the front, it looks a lot nicer at the front. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm having loads of issues with the front bumper. Now, I have a genuine N-Tech bumper. Um, now, why that was on this car, I don't know. Maybe in Thailand they did some weird kind of configuration. You, you tend to find that over here where they, they have some parts from like an AMG or an M and some parts from an SE. It's really weird. It's like Asia spec and every country like Taiwan, Thailand, Hong Kong, they have these weird kind of hybrid models that you don't get in England or America. You don't get to spec your car over here, you know? You just get to choose from like three models. So if it was 1986, you probably got to choose a 318, a 320, and if you're rich, a 325. And then that was it. You didn't get to choose much else other than maybe a color. Um, so it's quite sad. I, I had an M-Tech bumper, but it's so old and fragile. When they took it off, um, it literally basically fell apart and it's been repaired so many times that if they repair it again it won't look right and when they wrap it they say it won't look good so I've had no choice but to get a replica bumper which has kind of bummed me out a bit but hey what can you do right I mean it's a 33 year old car so Hey ho, at least you can at least get the bumpers here. I mean, that was, that's pretty good. And I gotta say, the, the fiberglass they do here in Thailand, um, actually, I'll show you. Um, this is uh, Thai, and I don't know if you can see, um, it's completely smooth. Um, this hasn't been sanded down or anything. 
um, they literally come almost perfect. <laughs> so the fiberglass parts that you can get here in Thailand are a much higher quality than what you get in Europe. I know this because this is from Europe and it's been a nightmare. And if you come to the back, this spoiler here, um, I can't remember if it's Latvia or Poland, uh, you can see that this is not very smooth. It's kind of lumpy, um, so it needs to be redone. Okay, so this is a, um, a Thai uh, rear bumper. Um, this did need to be smoothed, but I mean, if you can get the detail here, the quality is actually really, really good. Um, it's pretty thick. It doesn't move too much. Um, and it didn't need much modifying at all. Um, so the quality of the Thai fiberglass is just on another level compared to the European stuff. So I'm very, very impressed. So uh, the front bumper that I've ordered um, is from Thailand. And I'm pretty damn sure it's gonna be of a higher quality than anything you find on eBay or, or anything that you find in Europe anyway. They just seem to whack them in a mold over there and just pull them out. And I know I've seen it. I mean, I've, I've got a whole bunch of European parts and the quality is just terrible. They need so much tweaking and, and moving around and, and filling in. Um, I linked to a video before, which in my previous one, I showed you there's a, funny enough, a Thai guy in America rebuilding his E30 and he's using uh, fiberglass parts again from Europe and it's taken them hours and hours to get everything to fit um, and you don't have that problem with the stuff here so you know Thailand one Europe zero not bad eh now you're probably wondering what the hell am I thinking spending so much time and money on such an old BMW and if you know me from before I did the same thing with my M3 um, this is why that is a V8. Not just any V8, it's the 1UZ. Now, I spoke about it before, but it's not even just any 1UZ. This is the original 1989 Toyota Sora 1UZ. And there's a lot of history behind this car, okay? Toyota originally developed it for IndyCar, but they abandoned the project some point in the 80s. And, uh, when they were building the LS400, the Lexus LS400, they needed a four liter V8 and they just happened to have half a developed engine left behind, which was that IndyCar project. Um, and that's what this is. It's half an IndyCar engine. Literally the whole bottom end is bomb proof. Uh, the first generation, which is what this is, has rods that are like that fat. They're not forged, but they're so fat that you can put a ridiculous amount of boost on them if you want to boost it. Um, it's also one of the few engines that if you snap a belt, um, it's a non-interference engine. So the valves will not hit the pistons. You just change the belt, carry on as if nothing happened, which is why you get a million mile Lexus because they just, you can't kill them. You can't kill these engines, it's just impossible. So it may not be the most powerful engine in the world, but you know, it's a four liter V8. It sounds amazing. It makes great torque, is very reliable. And in the weight, because it's aluminum, I actually checked this. The M10 that came out of this is only 20 pounds lighter than this V8. So just think about that. Only 20 pounds difference. 20 pounds is, you know, a week dieting or a bit of shopping. It's nothing. Um, you've got about 220, 250 horsepower, so M3 power, but with a lot more torque. And that's just as standard, okay? This engine is capable of a crap ton more than 220, 250. And I do have plans to remove this part here and install a little thing that turns like this and makes a little whoop whoop noise which will give it about 350 horsepower. And it will make that 24 seven, all day long on regular octane fuel and never have to worry about it. Um, so that's why. Um, 
it's a cracking car to drive. It feels great. And, uh, you know, it's one of the few cars where BMW really cared. When they used to build these, they put a lot of effort into it. And you can feel it. Every button, every, every time you close the door, every bit of metal on it, it just feels solid. Um, it, you can tell a lot of love and care has gone into it. And then combine that with this amazing engine by Toyota. I think this will outlive me or you and most people. I can't imagine this car really going wrong besides just, you know, wear, normal wear and tear. So, um, yeah, the heart of the beast. Um, I've also upgraded, as you've probably seen before, but I didn't really show it enough, uh, the seats. Okay, so we have uh, 80s Recaros. Incredibly comfortable. Excuse me while I uh, take a seat. A bit messy in here because they haven't finished. Oh. oh, these are so nice. Now this is when Recaro um, had uh, orthopedic seats and um, they've got all these adjusters on the side. So you can adjust all the bolsters, obviously forwards and backwards, you can tilt it, but you can adjust the bolsters left to right and you can push the, the cushion outwards and inwards. I mean, there's so much adjustment on them. They're not electronic, um, but I mean, I don't really want electronic. There's too many things to go wrong, plus they're heavy. Um, but these are just beautiful seats. Um, and they're in uh, Napa leather. So they're really nice. They've been completely redone. Very, very soft. I'll let you have another gander at them. Eek. Beautiful seats really are um, and uh, they didn't cost me a lot uh, I think they worked out about 400 pound and I paid another 100 pound to have them fitted if you look closely uh, they're using genuine genuine Recaro rails so uh, the height is perfect a um, few little cool things in the car Still got the original 1986 uh, seat belt buckle, uh, cassette deck, GMT from 1986. Okay, that's just me showing off. Um, that's, if you're a car nerd, you recognize that. That's an R34 GTT gearbox, four speed. Don't get me started. I wish I had the five speed from Toyota. I have no idea why he's done that, but whatever is there. Um, and you're probably wondering why I got a four-door. Well, there's a reason for that. I've had nothing but two doors for the past decade, and they drive me mad. Um, every time I go shopping, every time I've got to take someone somewhere, I just never have space. I mean, the M3, two-door. The M2, two-door. The S3, two-door. My old Golf GTI, two-door. I mean, just, oh, just drove me crazy. So it's nice to have an extra door. It's just nice to have. Even though I don't carry passengers, it's nice to have. And I'll tell you another good thing about having a, uh, a four-door is that... Okay. Um, is that the doors are shorter, so when you're coming in and out of the car in a car park, the doors are like an inch shorter, so it's easier to get in and out of, as opposed to uh, this poor guy over here. But then again... Is that a guy, Ardo? Yeah, that's a Gallardo. So he has to open his doors like that. Good luck, buddy. Anyway, so that's a tour of my unfinished uh, E30 or Project Top Gun. Um, hopefully next week it should be close to finished. Um, uh, after this, I'll be doing a video on the Yamaha MT-15. Uh, a lot of you seem to take a lot of interest in the MT-15. Um, huge spike in views and that, I have no idea why. Um, it is a good bike, great beginner's bike. Um, and I specialize in upgrades for that, so uh, stay tuned and I'll uh, upload a video on that soon. All right guys, thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.